So hi, uh, today uh, we will make an introduction to synchronous machine. So just as a you know review, uh, what we did from uh, last week, uh, we discussed the effect of the rotating MMFs, and actually uh, synchronous machines use the same principle as we will see. So here in the animation, you see three pulsating waves. So the red, blue, and the green ones are just pulsating. But when you add all those three, they generate a rotating MMF. I mean, in this case, it is shown in the linear scale, but you can think like it is rotating. So it's a rotating MMF with a constant magnitude, and it is 1.5. And we derived uh, those things in the last week. So actually, the fundamental idea of all AC machines is to generate a rotating MMF in the stator, and you can put uh, some uh, different uh, rotors uh, I mean it, we will see uh, the induction machines asynchronous machines and uh, synchronous reluctance machines that kind of things but at the end of day the rotor is just trying to align itself like we have seen in the early weeks of the course to the minimum reluctance position or to the minimum magnetic energy point but whenever it tries to you know aligns itself then the MMF moves and then the rotor gets into a constant rotation as if it is a donkey uh, trying to catch a carrot. Okay, so synchronous machines are, you know, you generate almost uh, maybe more than 90% uh, of, of the world's electricity because <coughs> they are used in hydroelectric power stations, natural gas power stations. If there's a nuclear power plant, there's also synchronous machines there. And also, you know, <coughs> the motor side, uh, for example, permanent magnet synchronous machines uh, are used by uh, many electrical car brands, as we will see in OD, OD or in Renault, for example, that kind of things. And actually, they are, you know, the synchronous machines are really the backbones of our civilization. And again, I'm not going to open it here, but I, I suggest you to watch uh, that uh, video from the Matrix Reloaded movie. So, in the synchronous machine in the armature, so it's in the uh, stator, uh, so we have a three-phase cylindrical uh, stator. Okay, so we have three-phase winding stiff distribution and uh, it actually generates the rotating MMF. And actually that uh, stator can be connected either as we have seen in the first semester in the transformers. So it can be connected like as a delta or as a Y connection, but at the end of the day, the motor has just three terminals, so you don't usually see the neutral point, but you have the three uh, connections for those three phases. And the rotor, uh, rotor uh, actually can be uh, either salient pole or cylindrical rotor. Okay, so it can be. Uh, excited with uh, if it is you know salient pole I will I will show you the graphs or cylindrical rotor it doesn't change anything so the rotor is excited by direct current okay so you apply DC to the rotor so basically it becomes an electromagnet which south and north poles okay or in some applications like in the permanent magnet and uh, synchronous machines they can have permanent magnets instead of uh, instead of uh, electrical excitation, you have the permanent magnets aligned in uh, place like north-south, north-south arrangements. So you don't need extra electromagnets, but at the end of the day, once you rotate the rotor, it actually uh, it's, it's a moving uh, electromagnet. Okay, so here you see an example uh, of a synchronous machine. So here you see like one I mean, this is the rotor, so the rotating part. So that is, you know, one like one pole of the magnet, electromagnet. So there's another uh, pole, so on. And here, what you see is like uh, two slip rings. Okay, they are called bilezik uh, in Turkish. Uh, so those two slip rings actually uh, connected to the stationary part with some brushes. So it is similar to uh, the DC motor, but in the DC motor. We have the commutator coils, so they change polarity. But in this one, uh, they just give a constant current. And when it's rotating, you can uh, transmit power 
uh, to the rotor okay so actually uh, the stator winding again you know this is like the simple uh, schematic of the synchronous machine so you can show the three phase like that again it doesn't have to be like just three single coils it can be distributed and I will show you a couple of uh, videos and the rotor here it is a salient pole rotor so it is really similar to what we have seen in the plunger examples in the electromechanical energy conversion and you apply some DC voltage so this is DC voltage so once it is uh, excited with some uh, direct current so that thing becomes an electromagnet with south and north pole and once you you know apply a three phase winding uh, three phase winding with three phase currents like that so the rotor tries to align itself with that uh, rotating MMF so that is you know the basic idea and here uh, actually you see an animation so this is a BLDC motor with uh, concentrated with discrete uh, stator winding so you can turn on and off again you know they are called BLDC because of the uh, excitation waveform but at the end of day actually again they have like three terminals coming out of the uh, BLDC and it is technically a AC machine okay so again in the rotor in this case I think it's a permanent magnet rotor and tries to itself to the excited coil okay so what you can do again this is uh, not really uh, smooth and can have lots of harmonics so what you can have is uh, you can distribute okay we will discuss those things at the end of semester so you can connect like many co uh, many coils in parallel or in series so they can be excited with an AC and instead of just having like discrete steps for excitation it is a more uh, smooth variation okay so you can have that uh, that kind of operation and this is called uh, synchronous machines permanent magnet synchronous machines for this case okay so here uh, there's an animation for that one so again you have the north south in the rotor and there's a rotating MMF in the stator okay they just aligned with that pulse okay. and they will get locked magnetically this means that rotor will rotate the same speed of RMF so that is they will rotate at the synchronous speed okay so that is why we call these ones uh, sync and that's why we call them uh, synchronous motors so let's have a look at the uh, rotor types as we have seen uh, it can be a cylindrical rotor in the cylindrical rotor on the left hand side uh, you see the air gap okay so air gap is like constant throughout the you know, rotor circumference and since there is uh, you know a constant air gap there is no reluctance variation and on the right uh, you see a salient pole uh, synchronous machine so it, the air gap is like uh, minimum at that part but it is much uh, bigger at this region okay so again this is more uh, the physical representation of a uh, real design so here it's a salient pole and it's like an electromagnet it is one all those poles and here is a cylindrical pole again the surface is like more cylindrical but you have like many coils uh, like concentrated sections so I will I will show you actual photos so this is a, a cylindrical uh, rotor okay so let me move me here so okay and as you know the air gap is like constant okay there is not much uh, inductance difference from the reluctance point of view okay but you still have the this is a mutually excited system so you still have the rotor coil and actually the due to the mutual inductance it will try to align itself with the stator MMF but there is no reluctance torque there is no reluctance torque but there is still uh, synchronous torque so DL, DL theta over DT can be zero in these machines but you can have 
uh, you still have the mutual inductance uh, variation okay so they are usually used in uh, high speed turbo generators and uh, those machines i think this is from a natural gas power plant or uh, some kind of uh, thermic power plant and they are you know used in turbo generators two or four poles we will discuss uh, those things and actually you generate uh, some kind of uh, high pressure steam and those uh, steam rotates the turbines i think at the end of uh, that line there are some uh, synchronous generators and they are rotated by the power of the steam okay so here you see an actual uh, view of a salient pole motor okay again still here so here you can definitely see the you know salient shape so here you have the minimum air gap but on that part actually the air gap is much bigger and again even if you don't exact the coil if you just remember from the uh, previous weeks so even if you have that kind of salient shape even if you don't exact the coil it will try to align uh, itself to the minimum reluctance position so in short they have both the reluctance and synchronous torque components we will uh, see the effects of those torques in the in the following week okay so salient pole motors are uh, usually used in uh, hydroelectric power plants or you know large pole low speed generators so i think this is from a hydroelectric power plants and you can see you know the poles of those electromagnets okay so Synchronous machines are, you know, again, for generators, they are usually large machines uh, in the megawatt scale or even like hundreds of megawatts. And I would like to show you a couple of uh, those photos. So here, uh, this is a director I permanent magnet generator for uh, wind turbines. Okay, uh, I think, oh, so it is for a wind turbine and you know you can see the worker here there are a couple of workers here so all that thing is to be mounted on a wind turbine and the wind blades uh, rotating uh, that generator and again uh, this is a synchronous generator for a, a steam turbine and this is the steam you know turbine bit and probably that part is the uh, generator and they can be like even larger so here again this is from Enercon uh, uh, I think they have 5 megawatt or even larger models but it's rotating just at 12 rpm 12 rotations per minute and I think you can see the workers here okay and you can understand the size of that thing I think there's a like 10 meter diameter or something like that and that all those things are uh, the stator of the generator and they can be like even uh, bigger so here you see a bus and this is a uh, i think this is one of the largest uh, hydropower plants in the world there's another one in china i will show and those pipes are all carrying the you know high pressure uh, water columns they are hitting the turbine and those you know one of those uh, generators are 700 uh, megawatts okay so here you see let me open the uh, video so this is uh, the shaft okay this is not the actual machine this is the shaft of the motor and I think below they have they have the high pressure uh, water coming in and it is uh, quite large as you can see but actually it can be like even uh, you know bigger uh, I think there was a uh, sir this was the same one so this is the actual you know generator of that one i don't know if you can see those things let me open the image uh, for you so th these are you know some workers standing on the rotor and you can see like the poles of the rotor and again like inside there are like many workers and that rotor is going to be placed inside the stator you see the stator windings and actually probably there will be just a few uh, centimeters at most uh, the gap air gap okay so the rotor mass for that one is uh, more than 2600 tons okay but there's even a bigger uh, one that one so that is the three gorgeous dam in china 
so the that dam itself is producing like 22.5 gigawatts so it's like one third of the uh, turkey's consumption and actually here you see the you know workers trying to put it in place and actually due to the water hold in the in that uh, dam so the rotational inertia of the uh, of the earth increased and actually that caused uh, rotation uh, for uh, earth's rotations to slow down by 0 0.06 microseconds because of the increase in inertia okay so actually i would like you to think about those things you know all that machines are rotating somewhere also in our country and they are all uh, supplying our uh, civilization our cities so actually most of the energy we need is produced uh, by the interaction of those magnetic fields of those uh, synchronous machines and there's a, a nice uh, video from Richard Feynman and I would like to show you some part of it and I strongly advise you to watch uh, all of the video it is really insightful okay here you go Move myself. But we can start with to explain many other things that looked like they were everybody would just accept them. You know, you can't put your hand through the chair. That's taken for granted. But that you can't put your hand through the chair when looked at more closely. Why? It involves these same repulsive forces. Uh, anyway, I'm so I'm not going. To, was it the so this part is talking about the synchronous machines. Hydroelectric power dam. Oh. Terms, a great big wheel. Right. And this wheel is connected with long thin pieces of copper. Like transmission lines and the distribution up. lines. Split up and spread all over the city. And then they're connected back through another little gadget that makes wheels turn. All the wheels in the city are turning because this thing turns. If this thing stops, all the wheels stop. It starts again. Again. And I think that's kind of a marvelous thing of nature. It's kind of, it's extremely curious. That phenomenon, I like to think about a lot. Because all it is, is copper and iron. See, sometimes we think it's a man-made generator. It's very complicated. The phenomenon is a result of some special something that we name. But it's nature doing it. So it's just, you know, the and interaction between the electric copper, fields and magnetic fields. So actually, I, I suggest you to watch uh, all the video if you have some time, okay? Okay, so now uh, let's look at some details of the generator and assume now the stator is not excited, okay? It's just uh, open circuit. Uh, maybe you can connect your uh, oscilloscope props, but it's not drawing any current, okay? So the rotor now is just excited with DC and I start rotating. I start rotating the rotor once it is excited with DC. So what's the shape of the induced voltage in the stator winding? So actually it's not uh, difficult to see even if like the, these are open circuit, let's assume. Okay, and once you start rotating, uh, start rotating your rotor, it will first, the south pole, uh, first induce the A then it will become 90 degrees, then there will be no flux, then the North Pole will uh, induce A, then you know you will have see some varying magnetic field on phase A. So therefore, you know, depending on that variation, you take the deriv uh, derivative and let's say, uh, again, it doesn't have to be perfect sinusoid, but in our example, let's say you have the sinusoid MMF distribution and you take the derivative and also you take another cosine or another uh, sinusoid okay 
And again, if you look at the induced voltage uh, characteristics of phase A and phase C, there's some time difference. So there's some uh, phase difference where the peak of uh, south pole reaches A and then it reaches C or vice versa. So then you will have some kind of uh, phase differences with all those voltages. Okay, so again, it is still possible to run that things as a generator. You can excite uh, the rotor with DC, you rotate it, and you can induce uh, some voltage in the, in the stator windings. Again, you know, there's not a special thing that makes some uh, electric machines as motor or other things as generators. It is just a mode of operation, okay? So let's uh, move on. And what is the induced voltage proportional to? Okay, what's the induced voltage proportional to? So first, again, if I just give a small amount of current here, okay, so that will uh, cause less MMF and less MMF cause less flux or less flux tends then let this, that uh, less flux create a, a less induced voltage in A. So it's definitely proportional with the magnitude of the field winding. If you just if you just don't apply any field winding, then it will be just iron, so it will not induce any voltage. So the first thing is uh, the magnitude of the field current. Okay, we will use those things in the equivalent circuit calculations. And second is the frequency, right? Remember the magnitude of the induced voltage is proportional to rate of the change of the magnetic flux, right? d phi over dt or d lambda over dt. So actually if I rotate it faster, okay, like as a uh, induced voltage with a higher frequency uh, AC voltage in transformers, so in a synchronous machine if you rotate it faster, it will induce a larger uh, voltage, okay? So basically the induced voltage is proportional to magnitude of the field current and the frequency. And of course, you know, the, there is some limit uh, to the field current. It doesn't mean if you just uh, increase the field current by 100 times and automatically you will get 100 times the induced voltage. Uh, there is always in practical cases, uh, there is always uh, the saturation and also residual magnetization, magnetism. Okay, so again, you know, most of the time we would like to operate the machine in the linear region anyways because to minimize losses and have a linear uh, relation with the current and the voltage. But you need to be careful, you know, not operating in a region where the magnetic core in the electric machine gets saturated. Okay, so there's another very important concept. So it is the relation between the mechanical rotation and the induced electrical frequency. Let's have a look at uh, these two cases, right? So the one, okay, the first one, like it is have a straight uh, plunger. So if I rotate it that one, and again here, you don't have to have like a three phase coil, it's just shown by single phase coil. So if I mechanically rotate it once, and North Pole links the coil, and then the south pole links the coil. So I make a one mechanical rotation and that makes a one electrical rotation. So actually on the left hand side, the mechanical uh, speed or mechanical frequency is equal to the electrical frequency. Let's see what happens on the right hand side, okay? So in the right hand side, they use uh, it's like a cross shaped uh, rotor and they have, I don't know if you can see, they have south, north, south, north. Okay, so they have one, two, three, four uh, different poles. And actually, once I rotated full one, full mechanical rotation, if you are just standing here, what you see is one south, one north, one south, one north. So actually, that makes uh, two complete rotations. So one mechanical rotation actually creates a voltage two complete uh, rotations. So the frequency induced, the induced frequency on the right hand side for that motor is twice the frequency of the mechanical rotation. So if you rotate the rotor at one hertz, one full rotation uh, per second or 
60 RPM, 60 revolutions per minute. And the frequency that you will get is 2 Hertz, okay, on the right hand side. So that is, that is a uh, important definition and that's like an important uh, parameter for an AC machine. So it is the number of poles. How many poles does it have in the rotor? Actually, you know, it's not only in the rotor, so you need to arrange you need to arrange uh, the stator accordingly. So if the stator is two poles, then the rotor is going to be two poles as well. Okay. But well, here actually you see like A minus A here, but again this is north, whatever, uh, this is south, so it has two poles. This is a two pole machine and you see the stator windings of one phase here. Okay, what you see here, it is a four pole uh, electrical machine and here you have south, north, south, north, okay. You don't put like south, south, north, north, because once you put south, south next to each other, that makes a large uh, south pole, and again it becomes a two pole machine. So we need to make a change of variation from maximum to minimum, from south pole to north pole. Okay, and that pole need to link that one, and again that is why those coils. Again, we will discuss that at the end of semester while uh, designing the electrical machines but uh, you can see in the previous one a and minus a is put on is put like 180 degrees but here it's put with 90 degrees because if you put at 180 degrees you will have uh, north pole and south pole linking the same coil simultaneously and that is creating zero flux so we don't want that we don't want the south and north pole to cancel each other so that's why uh, now the coil cross section area by cross section area I mean the area in the stator surface is now smaller but now it is only linked if you rotate it for example 45 degrees that one is only linking uh, one coil so that is a four pole machine okay so let's have a look at uh, how many poles does this machine has okay this machine has uh, this machine is used for uh, synchronous uh, uh, hydroelectric power station as a synchronous generator again let's see uh, one two three four five uh, six seven eight nine ten uh, eleven twelve probably that is i think half of the symmetry so this machine should have like 24 poles okay the half of the thing so this machine has 24 poles so it makes one rotation but the electrical system makes 12 rotations okay so this is uh, again this is a two pole machine so electrical frequency is equal to the uh, mechanical frequency so this is a four pole machine and the electrical frequency is twice of the uh, mechanical frequency and this is a 24 pole machine so the electrical frequency is uh, 12 times of the mechanical rotation so that's my uh, question for you now and what should be the rotational speed okay so what should be the rotational speed in rpm to induce 50 hertz voltage for that generator so please uh, try to calculate yourself as an exercise okay and you can pause uh, the video and let's uh, calculate it uh, together so if it were a two pole machine if it were a two pole machine in order to ro generate a 50 hertz uh, electrical uh, voltage i need to rotate the rotor 50 times a second or in other words 50 times 60 i need to rotate 3000 revolutions per minute if it were a two pole machine but this machine has uh, 24 poles so actually there's a ratio of half of that value for uh, pole pairs so it is 12 okay so if you divide if you divide 3000 okay by 12 that makes 250 rpm okay so the water 
turbine and hit, you know the water hitting to the turbine and turbine has to be adjusted so that if it rotates as 250 rpm uh, it is uh, generating a 50 hertz output voltage so in other words it's like a gear ratio that you will find in a mechanical gearbox so this is all electrical system but again you have some kind of a gear ratio between the electrical and mechanical uh, system okay so let's uh, make those definitions uh, more formal so we need to define one parameter called the mechanical speed okay this is omega mechanical and then we have the electrical speed and mechanical speed is either equal or always less than uh, the electrical frequency with a ratio of p divided by 2 and p is the number of poles okay so if it's a two pole machine 2 divided by 2 they are equal or in other words the uh, ratio between those things are proportional to number of pole pairs okay if you divide the poles to 2 you will have pole pairs and poles number of poles it is always an even, even number okay you don't get a machine with three poles how can you make it like north south north and there's another north so there's no difference so it becomes a uh, two pole machine okay it has to be uh, an even number two poles four uh, four poles six poles eight poles blah blah okay then if you divide the pole with two you get the pole pairs and you multiply it with the mechanical speed to calculate the electrical uh, frequency or speed and similarly similarly you can find the difference between mechanical rotation and electrical uh, not rotation but electrical in this voltage uh, phase angle okay so there is the same relation between these two with the pole pairs okay so that's an important concept that we will use uh, throughout the semester okay so synchronous machines they rotate on that synchronous speed because they are locked to the magnetic field and they will try to follow it but there is no uh, speed difference between the stator mmf and the rotor mmf okay so synchronous speed in rpm okay i mean rpm is mostly used in mechanical uh, systems so it is revolutions per minute so how you can uh, let me take myself to up okay so this is the mechanical speed in rpm okay so this is actually the electrical speed again it doesn't have to operate as a generator maybe it's a motor and if you multiply the electrical frequency by 60 that gives you revolutions per minute in the electrical way but in order to get into the mechanical system you need to divide it by uh, pole pairs or pole divided by two or in other words either you can get uh, that two to the top and it is 120 times f electrical divided by p gives you the synchronous speed in rpm okay so for example if if you have a synchronous motor a two pole synchronous motor connected to the grid uh, voltage in turkey so 50 times 120 divided by 2 gives you 3000 rpms okay 3000 rpms but for example if you take the same electrical motor and take it to the us or japan where the grid frequency is 60 hertz so it is 120 times 60 divided by uh, two poles it is 3600 rpm okay or if you have a four pole machine in turkey that is rotating at uh, 1500 rpm okay and vice versa you can calculate it in us so those machines you know synchronous machines are constant speed machines okay constant speed machines but if you give constant frequency again um, we mentioned uh, they are used in electrical uh, electric cars you know or that kind of variable speed uh, applications so in that case you have a power electronic circuit which can generate 
a variable frequency okay they don't have to be directly connected to the grid always so they can have some kind of power electronic interface which can convert the grid frequency let's say 50 hertz but you can still give i don't know 17 hertz uh, to your machine to drive it at a constant uh, at a variable speed but at the end of the day whatever the electrical frequency okay the rotor is trying is following that frequency again the mechanical speed can be lower uh, due to the uh, pole pairs okay so here i would like to show a couple of uh, videos and again uh, please uh, watch them if you have some time i will just uh, show you a couple of instances from uh, those videos okay the first one is renault zoe okay so it's one of the most uh, popular electric cars in Europe I think it's quite competitive in terms of uh, price so uh, I don't know if they change in the latest generations but they used uh, synchronous uh, machines so those are the windings okay of the stator and now it's being manufactured I was trying to find okay so this is uh, the windings the stator windings right so it's being all installed so they are using that kind of uh, robots for automatic manufacturing okay that's interesting so this, they are using a salient pole uh, rotor so you can see this is the rotor that is rotating inside the electric car and they are trying to insert the coils uh, to that rotor okay they are winding i don't know it's quite fast so now it's put here okay that machine is rotating i don't know how many times so you can have hundreds of uh, number of turns so you apply some dc current to here and you can see the brush here okay you can see the copper uh, brush and actually this is a salient pole Okay, this is a salient pole synchronous motor. Okay, let's look at the different brand Audi. I think I think I wrote it wrong. Uh, E-tron uh, motor, right? Here you go. I think that one uses a, a permanent magnet rotor, if I'm not wrong. Anyway, I would like to show you another thing. So this is uh, this is the stator, okay? So you see the windings, uh, all those connections are coming out. And they are put into some exact shape. Anyway, they are installing then those windings. So that is, I think, the terminal thing. And let's see how many cables are coming out of that one, right? So they are all connecting those ones. Okay, see, this is the power con. Oh, let's go a little bit. So these are the all power connectors, right? So they have one, two, three connections, and probably that is the common point. So they are connected in a Y arrangement and the Y point is the midpoint, the common point is left inside the motor and you have just uh, three cables coming out of the motor. Okay, so it's the three phase connections. And they are winding it for uh, mechanical uh, rigidness for that purpose. Anyway. And now uh, Let's look at the wind turbine generator. Actually, it is like the uh, large uh, wind turbine, an aircon uh, wind. So here you go. So that is, again, you see the workers here. Okay, it's quite large. You can see the coils actually here. All that thing, I think this is the rotor. I think this is the rotor coil, the rotor. Service life. 
Okay, it's quite a big generator and this is how they uh, manufacture it and this is the wind turbine itself okay here actually you see you know all the stator these are all the stator connectors okay so it's not like automotive so it's mostly workers here but you see they are placing the coils inside those things and I think there's so here this is the pulse okay so it's the electromagnetic pulse so I don't know if you can you can count the I think number of poles like one two three instead of like manufacturing it like one large circle it will be really difficult to transport so they are um, building the rotor in two pieces 180 degree sections and they just uh, mount it in the field later on but you can see how many you know large number of poles does it have and this is you know the wide okay let's move to another one actually I thought like uh, most of the uh, most of the machines are used in you know hydroelectric dams and that kind of things but another interesting thing like most people don't do like probably has seen the uh, large ships you know stuck in the Suez Canal and you know that kind of uh, large ships actually don't use diesel generators directly connected to the propulsion okay because it is uh, kind of less efficient and it is really uh, difficult to control it with the uh, gearbox clutches that kind of things the usual method again a similar method is used in uh, locomotives even if it is a diesel locomotive or is even if it's a diesel engine in a ship what they do is they have a large diesel motor yes you know they have they generate most of the um, all of the energy from that diesel fuel but they run the diesel motor coupled to a synchronous generator so it is a large diesel generator basically so the ship is producing its own electricity as if it is a country and then that electric is transmitted across the ship you know it can be used in different purposes and you have electric motors connected to the propulsion units the propellers and actually you are using a diesel motor to run a synchronous generator and that synchronous generator then drives a synchronous motor in this case it is it can be induction motors but there's an azipot okay there's abb azipot and let's see the video okay so here again you see the shoes this is a salient pole uh, motor and you see the workers here right so it's all being installed anyway they are bringing so this is going to be the stator and that thing is going to be attached to the ship okay so again you know modern ships doesn't have the rudders okay the man they don't have the rudders to uh, deviate the water instead they rotate all the propellers like in this case so they can have a high maneuverability anyway so let's move on and let's see how it is placed inside a ship so they are you know put inside that ship so inside there's a synchronous motor there Oops, i don't know if they have the propellers okay so there's the propellers and you can see how large they are okay cool and the last one i would like to show you is the turbo generator okay so it's let's open the Siemens one so it is a Siemens this the generators I'd like to show you the turbine itself so this is there's a high pressure so it's like a it's like a uh, turbo motor in an aircraft uh, but you don't inject fuel but you send a uh, high pressure steam and it just uh, rotates those blades at high 
speeds and then and then that thing actually drives a generator okay so i think it's here so it's like a you know it's like an aircraft engine but actually you know we use that kind of uh, steam turbines in natural gas power plants in coal you know power plants or even nuclear power plants actually you generate some steam some either it can be uh, the energy to uh, heat up the water can come from the coal natural gas or nuclear power plant but at the end of the day you have high pressure steam and that steam is sent over to those turbines and that turbines are uh, driving some synchronous uh, generators okay anyways you can i think you can watch the video later on so okay uh, that's all uh, for this video and in the next video we will uh, drive the equivalent circuit uh, model for those synchronous machines okay thank you